Hola y bienvenidos a una nueva entrevista para CódigoOculto.com y el canal de YouTube a Enigma. Y como veis, está sentado a mi lado el señor Christopher Mellon. Thank you so much for being with us today. My pleasure. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, first thing, I'm, well, kind of all my questions are kind of uh, on your opinion. That's what matters to me the most. So, first of all, first is, um, do you know, and I mean it for sure, if some UAPs are of non-human origins? I do not. Okay, so it's just your, your thesis, so to speak. I think the hypothesis, there's a lot of data consistent with that hypothesis. I think it's a very credible hypothesis. In some cases, it's the only explanation I know of that makes sense. In the Nimitz case, for example, What that craft was doing is so far beyond anything that we can even conceive that I, it, we, it can't, it's not ours, it's not American, it's not Russian, it's not Chinese. So it makes sense that it would be from some other civilization, but we can't say we have absolute proof yet. Okay. Um, do you see like viable from a standing point of the intelligence community? that a phenomenon uh, like UAP that's been taking place for more than 70 years and studied by the USAF at least for 22 years uh, to be still unknown today um, by the government and that there is no more study material than that. I mean, this is going on for, for too long. How is it possible that a government has not been studying it. Mm. That's a great question. I mean, it, it's been astonishing to me that we haven't been doing more to study this. Our government made a decision deliberately during the Cold War to try to discredit this issue and stop people from taking it seriously, stop writing about it. They wanted the public to stop being interested because they thought the Russians could take advantage of that issue in a war. So the Robertson panel in 1953, a CIA panel, made that recommendation and our government took it on board. The Air Force tried very hard to discredit this issue and convince the public that there was nothing to this. So the, if there was an effort, it was very, very secret. And um, when I worked in the Pentagon and when I worked on the, at the Intelligence Committee at Capitol Hill, You didn't even talk about this because people would, you were afraid people would laugh at you if you even mentioned it. Okay. And do you think it's kind of reasonable if they do have information, at least some videos, more than, I mean, than the ones we saw, thanks to you, um, to keep them, to keep that information on UAPs, like for national security reasons, they said, um, if some of them, releasing just one of them, would mean to resolve the mystery? Mm. So, a couple of things. Uh, one, I think they should be sharing more than they are. The videos that I gave the New York Times and Washington Post, there was an investigation by the Air Force afterward, and they determined they did not damage national security, and they confirmed they were truly unclassified. I know they have many other videos like that. I've seen some of them myself, and I don't understand the inconsistency why they, how they can justify keeping these other ones classified when those not only did not damage national security, they helped national security because they got, they got us finally interested acknowledging that there's an issue and helped the government make progress in trying to close these gaps in security and find out who's coming into our airspace. That's a, that was important progress. Even if you only were interested in national security and not science. That was, that was valuable progress. So I disagree with the classification policy right now. In some cases, the sources of information do need to remain classified. We have some capabilities that, that were developed at great cost and expense that provide very, very valuable, important war fighting information that we need to protect and preserve. But there's many other sources of things like these videos They could be released, and if they were released, I think it would help science, and I think it would be good for everybody. And those uh, those videos you said you've seen, uh, seen sorry, do you think any of those prove uh, the ET hypothesis? No, they don't. They're They not don't. definitive. They're not definitive at all. Okay. 
is it possible that the U.S. government has the definitive answer and mm. is not showing it, releasing it to the public? I, I, I believe there is more compelling information. Uh -huh. I know, I'm convinced, let me put it that way, that there is definitely more compelling information that remains classified, some of it for good reason. Uh, but I think if everything, if the other information that the UAP office has that they're briefing Congress behind closed doors, if all of that information went public, there would be a greater uh, respect, appreciation for the extraterrestrial hypothesis. It would strengthen that hypothesis. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, does the U.S. government mm -hmm. have any department, uh, any departments on, uh, sorry, on the U.S. government? Do they have any technological materials from a U? That's what we're trying to find out. So there are people that tell me that the answer is yes, people who are credible. There are other people who are equally credible who tell me no. And so that's partly why Congress is enacting new legislation to put in place a legal procedure to protect people. So if you were part of a program like that and you've signed a bunch of secrecy agreements, after that legislation is enacted, you'll be able to come forward without fear of prosecution and provide that information to this organization in the Congress. But when that, uh, if that, when that happens, if that happens, that information they are going to get is going to remain secret. I mean. Depends. It depends. Um, it, it, initially, it likely would remain classified, but Congress has never has never received confirmation that this is true. If they do then that's a new game, it's a new day. And they will have to have a discussion among themselves. Do we keep the secret? Do we think the public should know? Do we approach the White House and talk to the president? And do we advise him to make it public? And also, the more people know, the more the information is so red hot that if that information begins to circulate, it could also leak into the public domain. There's a greater chance that it could go public. So, but you're right, it won't necessarily go public right away. The issue is that if that information remains secret, ufology itself can't advance. Only the US government is going to advance. But ufology itself is going to remain right. stationary still. So, why would that matter to us in such case? Yeah, it, it, it might not. I mean, uh, it's, it's possible that. Um, it's possible the U.S. government has that information and it'll remain secret for decades to come. That's a possibility. Uh, nevertheless, there's a, we're making huge progress and there's a much greater chance than ever before of more information being made public. And also, don't, don't forget, there are groups like the Galileo Project at Harvard, independent outside of the government, they're conducting their own studies and they plan to make everything public like standard scientific procedure. So more scientific organizations around the world and more governments are doing more of their own studies and inquiries. So there are various sources of information, not just the government. It's, um, it, it's so far, when I got involved in this issue, nobody took it seriously at all. Now we're talking about, oh my gosh, maybe we're gonna find out we actually have proof Maybe we're going to be able to say, even if we don't have proof, we're now using the apparatus, all the satellites and all the sensors are being used now to start collecting. So even if there is no crash debris, we may discover now that we're looking, we may find new information that proves this. One of the things that I have suggested, I've repeatedly asked the Congress to ask the Defense Department is what about anomalies in space? They keep talking about UAPs in the air. Yeah. What are we seeing on orbit and what are we seeing in space? Because if we're seeing anomalies there, and that isn't necessarily proof, but if that information even is released to the public, nobody can say it's helicopters or Chinese lanterns or that kind of thing. And once again, that's another big step forward that takes us closer to, to the truth, because that's very hard to explain if we're seeing maneuvering intelligently controlled objects in space. Everything that has happened to date has been from the bottom up. It's been from troublemakers and activists like Lou and me. 
we snuck these videos out and I took them to the New York Times. Nobody in some secret organization was asking me to do that or telling me to do that. I went to my old friends at the Senate Intelligence Committee and the Senate Armed Services Committee and I suggested they ask for an unclassified report on UAP because there wasn't enough support in Congress for funding or an appropriation. That was the easiest thing that could be done that would help keep momentum going and keep the issue in the eye. So all this stuff has been coming from troublemakers and the bottom up. Um, there's no evidence of any kind of outside influence or program or anything like that. And, and I, it disappoints me when people say, it's like, what do they think I've been doing? I've been devoting my life to five years of this working almost full time. And so when I hear that, it, it's really disappointing to me because then people think that, no, this wasn't, uh, uh, this wasn't Chris Mellon. You know, I've been spending my own time and money. This has cost me a lot of money. I travel at my own expense. I've been doing, I've been on this campaign to try to raise awareness out of this. And some people want to make me look like I'm some, kind of, you know, tool of some secret organization or something. And if anybody has any information to support that, I would love to see it. Uh -huh. And if you look step by step at everything that's happened, take anything, the, the unclassified reports, the legislation on Capitol Hill, the video leaks, they investigated those leaks and I could have gotten in big trouble. And <laughs> I was nervous about that. I wouldn't have been nervous if I had been doing it on behalf of the government, right? I see. Yeah, well, thank you so much. Uh, that's all I can say. I know people aren't going to necessarily believe that. Yeah. But but that's the truth of the matter. Thank you very much for your honesty. You're, you're very welcome. Thank you, sir. Good